Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. So I've heard from you and you want more sublimation printer reviews to see which one's right for you. So today this video is sponsored by Epson. Over all projects and opinions are my own. And I'm going to unbox an Epson SureColor F170 sublimation printer, show you how to set it up. We're going to make some projects, a bunch of different projects, see how it works. And at the end, I'll give my full review. Now, if you're new to sublimation, let's talk about what a sublimation printer is. A sublimation printer is a special printer. It uses special ink. So this is a sublimation printer, comes with sublimation ink in a box. We'll go through the setup in a minute. You add the sublimation ink to the printer, and then it makes all the cool crafts that you see before you. So how does that work exactly? So this is not a standard printer. A standard printer is something you would use to print your child's homework or maybe a sticker sheet. This is a sublimation printer. It prints with special ink and then you use sublimation paper as well. After you print those out, you heat them and a chemical reaction happens with any poly coated blank. So we're gonna need sublimation blanks for this or a polyester shirt in the case of the one I'm wearing or the one down here I made a couple different shirts. So with your shirts, you would need like a 65% polyester is what I recommend for best results. 100% polyester will give you those big, bright, bold results. Then you can use polycoated mugs, polycoated tumblers. I have a metal blank here. I have a hardboard blank here. There are hundreds, thousands of sublimation blanks that you can purchase. You just need to look for things that say sublimation blanks when you're shopping for things to use with your sublimation printer. What else are we gonna use? So we're gonna use our sublimation printer, sublimation ink that comes in the box, Epson sublimation paper. We are gonna use a heat press and I'm gonna do a variety of things today. I'm gonna to use a regular heat press for a few of these. I'm gonna use a mug press as well as a tumbler press. That way we get an idea of how the Epson F170 works on all of these with different presses as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you what comes in the box of the F170 and show you just how easy the setup is because I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. So let's take a look. So here's the Epson F170 out of the box. Let's take a look at everything you get. So you have the printer itself, four colors of sublimation ink that come with the printer. You have the power cord itself. You have a start guide. And then there's also a bag that is for any kind of storage or if you need to move the printer. So you can save the bag for another time. It's a really large bag to put the printer inside. Now, what does not come with the printer that you will need is sublimation paper. So in order for the Epson system to work correctly, you're gonna need everything to be Epson. So you need the printer, the F170, the Epson sublimation ink that comes with the printer, and anytime you refill the printer, you will wanna use the same Epson ink. And then you'll need Epson sublimation paper. Now this printer that I have prints up to eight and a half by 14. So I have some eight and a half by 11 and some eight and a half by 14 paper here. So I can try both. I do find that eight and a half by 11 is what I use most, but there are a few cases where I use an eight and a half by 14. Now this is the F170. If you wanted to print larger, take a look at the F570. So now I'm gonna break open the start guide and we're gonna set this up. Let's take a look at how that's done. First of all, resist the urge to open your ink bottles when you get your printer. You don't wanna open these until you are ready to fill the tank. So I'm gonna set those to the side. You'll wanna put your printer on a flat, stable surface and then remove all this packaging material. You'll have various pieces of tape all over the printer that's just designed to keep it in place during shipment and all of these blue pieces of tape will need to be removed. Some of these pieces you may have to open up the printer in order to remove them and you want to open up the top and remove any packaging material from the inside. There's also a clear protective film over the front display and you can remove that at this time. You may notice that I haven't plugged this cord in yet. That's because we're not to that step. Do not plug your printer in until the setup's complete. So next we're going to add our ink. The first thing you want to do is do one color at a time. I'm going to start with black and we're going to shake it 15 times. Notice it's still in the packaging and I'm not gonna take it out. Then make sure I shake it up and down at least 15 times and then it's ready to fill. So let's take a look at the printer itself and the ports and how to use these bottles. So first let's open up these printer ports. So this top, you'll open it up and it'll click and then the lid stays open without any of my hands so I don't have to hold it open. 
and then this black portion right here flips up and you can see the ports. The ports themselves have stickers for black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. So that's B for black, C for cyan, which is blue, M for magenta, which is sort of a pink color, and Y for the yellow. So we're gonna fill each of these individually and we want to open one at a time. So you don't wanna open all four of these ports. We're gonna open one at a time, fill it, close it, open the next one. So first we'll just flip open our black and now the port is exposed. I'm now removing that black ink from the packaging material. And so now I have my black ink ready to go and we wanna hold it upright to remove this cap on the top. So now the cap's removed and you have your black ink ready to go. We are gonna go by the lines on the front of the printer here. The upper line is your fill line. And then the bottom line will indicate when you need to refill your printer. So for future reference, you will need to do that. Do not touch the tip with your fingers at all. The bottles are keyed to the individual ports. So you should not have to push down on them at all. They should just slide right into place. If you have to push down on the bottles, you probably have the incorrect bottle for the port that you have open. Put the bottle into place onto the port and it just sets down. Then the ink will start flowing into the tank. This is an automatic process. You don't have to squeeze or touch the bottles. They will fill automatically and stop when they are full. This takes about 90 seconds per port to fill the ink completely. You can hear the ink as it's flowing into the tank. You can hear it when it stops flowing and you can remove the bottle. There will probably be some ink left in the bottle, so just add the cap back to the top. Remember, don't touch the tip. Then you'll move on to your next port. Again, before opening the packaging, shake the bottle. Open the port that corresponds to the bottle of ink that you have, remove the cap of the ink, and set it into place on the port. Every port is keyed to the bottle, so you should not have to push down. Again, it may take up to 90 seconds to fill. We're gonna repeat this for all four of the colors with the exact same process. You may have some ink left at the end, and we'll talk about what to do with that. If you do spill any ink, you will wanna clean it up because it can stain the outside of the printer, your clothing, your hands, whatever, so you would wanna clean that up. Now that all, everything is full, we're gonna close these blue ports at the top. We're gonna close this black cover and we're gonna close the printer cover itself. Now we're ready to set this printer up and print because all of the inks are full. Now that I've made sure that the ink wells are full, it's time to plug it in. So we're gonna plug it in, take a look at what you do on the front control panel and charge the ink through this printer. And then we'll head to software, learn how to use the printer and make a few things. So let's plug it up. So I plugged the printer up and this control panel raises up and down. So you can put it at the angle, whatever angle works for you. We're gonna hold this power button down for about two seconds to turn the printer on. The printer comes right on and the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pick a language. So I'm gonna pick English. And to pick anything, we'll just use this OK button right in the center of the panel. So I'm going to pick English. If you wanted to move up and down to other languages, you would just use the arrows. So I'll pick English, press OK. Printer will read processing for a few seconds while it loads up. Now we wanna see the start here. So we're gonna hold this question mark down for about five seconds. and it should change screens. On this screen, you just wanna confirm that the tanks are filled with ink. We already did that, so make sure this is on done and press OK. Now, this is going to fill our lines with ink. This will take probably 14 minutes. I'm not gonna film this entire thing. The printer will make noises. It's okay. It's filling the entire printer with that ink and it will need time to do that. So let me allow this printer to do that and then we'll come back and take a look at the rest of the process. Once the charge is complete, it will display that on the display, and you may notice that your ink levels have went down. So mine have went down to about the first mark on all the reservoirs. So it does use some ink in order to charge the printer. Now we wanna work just on the printer itself. We have not done anything on the computer. We're gonna work just on the printer itself on print quality. And so we wanna to tap to adjust. We'll click OK to go to the adjustment screen, and then we'll press OK to adjust. So we'll wanna print first a print head nozzle check and we'll go ahead and say print. It should tell you to load the paper. Now we can go ahead and load the paper under the print. To do that, we'll pull out this bottom tray. You can move these feed guides apart just by squeezing on this blue one and pulling them apart. 
And then we're gonna add paper. You wanna add the paper so that the side you want printed is down. Add it, push it all the way up. Make sure your guides are adjusted so that the paper is tight and we'll go ahead and close the paper drawer. Then this tray is for output. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out so that as it prints, there's a place to catch our print. So the black tray is our output tray. Then we'll just go ahead and tell it to print our nozzle check page. Now for the nozzle check, you can use regular copy paper. I did put my sublimation paper inside, but that is not required. After you print the nozzle check page, you're concerned with the top portion. You want to see that those lines are complete. There will be some other information on the page that you may not necessarily be concerned about at this time, but take a close look at the top and make sure that all of the lines are complete. If you have any gaps in your line, you'll want to say that on the screen. So there's two options. There's an option for gaps and there's an option for no gaps. I'm not seeing any gaps in my line, so I'm going to choose the no gap option. If you see gaps in your nozzle check, you'll go ahead and move this over to the X and you'll pick that option and it'll probably print several more nozzle check pages just to get that ink flowing. Since mine's flowing already, I'm going to go ahead and choose the O here by just pressing OK. Then it wants to align my printing, so we're going to press OK again to align that. Again, it wants us to load paper, which I already have, so I'll just press OK. And now it's going to work on aligning my print heads for optimal printing. So you've looked at a page that has several options and you'll want to choose the best option one through seven. So you're choosing the option with the fewest streaks and I'm going to say that that is number five for me. So I'll hit the plus to go up to five because it's currently on four and then I'll press okay to proceed. Again, it tells me to load paper and so I'm gonna say okay to print because I already added paper to there. Once that prints, you'll need to choose the set of boxes that is not overlapping or separated. So the best set of boxes. Now all of these pages could also be printed on copy paper. I am using sublimation paper because it was handy. So for me, once again, that's number five. Five is already on the screen, so I'm gonna say okay. Now my print headlinement is complete, so I will click okay to dismiss. So at this time, you can go ahead and repeat the same process we did for filling the printer up and use hopefully most of what's left in these bottles and go ahead and put that in your printer. So just rewind back, repeat those same steps and add whatever's left in these bottles to your printer. Once you're done with that, it's time to do the software portion of this whole process. Now what you don't wanna do is let your computer go out and find a driver for this printer. We want to go to the Epson website, get the software and the drivers for this particular printer direct from Epson for the best results. So how are you gonna do that? Right in your Get Started Guide, there will be a website address for you to go to to do this. So I am gonna show it on the screen, but if you don't have the F170, for instance, if you bought the 570, the website address would be different. So I do want you to get that start guide out, see what the website is, punch that into your browser. But let's go ahead and head to my computer and see how this entire process works. So this is the website that it took me to, and you wanna to go to Downloads, and then it should detect your operating system. If it does not detect the right one or fails to detect, you can pick it from the drop down menu. And then we want to install the software. So if I expand both of these, you'll see that there is a software utility as well as a print driver. I want both of those, so I'm gonna use the combo package. That's sort of my recommendation, so you have everything from Epson. So I'm gonna download this top one. That will go to your downloads folder. You will need to open it in order to run it and you might need to click a few buttons to allow it to make changes to your device. So the first thing it says is that this file contains everything you need to use your Epson Surcolor F170. We'll click OK to continue and we'll just allow it to install. You'll need to pick your language. You will need to accept the terms and conditions. So I'm gonna go ahead and install both of these. You could uncheck the guide link if you wanted to. So now we'll click install and it will install everything on your computer. Then you just need to make sure your printer's on. Click next to proceed. It does ask you to make sure that ink charging is complete. Remember, those are the steps we just did. So we're gonna click the box and we're gonna click next. Next, it will search for your printer. Next, it asks you what kind of connection you would like. Now, the printer itself does not come with a USB cord. So we are just going to click wireless connection and click next. I'm gonna try the Wi-Fi auto connect and you can as well. You will just input your network name and password in this area. It should do everything for you as far as connecting your printer to Wi-Fi. 
You can register your product as well or choose not to. Now your setup's complete and you can click finish. So now that you saw how easy that setup was, let's talk about converted printers versus a dye sublimation printer. So the F170 is a dye sublimation printer. It is made for sublimation. So that means that the technology is in this printer for your sublimation needs. Now, you might be familiar with its standard Epson EcoTank printer that's actually an inkjet printer. So I do wanna note for you that when you convert a standard EcoTank printer to a dye sub printer, the limited warranty doesn't cover any damages covered by the dye sub ink. With this printer, the F170, it is made for sublimation. Everything I just did, adding the sublimation ink and setting it up, is what this printer was intended to do. That means I didn't board any warranty and I have full Epson support for my printer. So now let's make something with this printer and see how the colors work. Because that's another problem when you use a printer the way that it's not intended. So will the F170 right out of the box give me the colors I want? Let's find out. So let's take a look at a few things. So the first, I just went to printers in Windows and I'm gonna open up the printer and click manage. And I'm gonna open up the printing preferences menu. So I'm just gonna show you around a few things and this is the screen you would get in a lot of Windows programs in order to print to this printer. We are gonna go through this as well as printing in Photoshop and I'm gonna print both ways, press both those to the same shirt and we'll see which way I like best. It may be different for you. So the first thing is the document size. So these are the document sizes that this particular printer can print. An A4 letter or legal. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on letter. You can print portrait or landscape. Now, it has two different paper types. The first one is for rigid surfaces. So think things like um, hardboard sublimation surfaces, mugs, tumblers, things that are not textiles. The second version is for textiles. So you would wanna pick the paper type that corresponds to what you're pressing to. So pick the paper type that corresponds to that. Then for quality, I always change that to high. Then you can go ahead and click more options at the top here. And we can leave the color correction at automatic so we can allow the printer to correct its own colors. We could also click it to custom, click advanced, and do like no color adjustment if we didn't want any. Or you can say to use an ICM. So it'll use an ICM profile now without me needing to use Photoshop. So I'm gonna go ahead and print something from like Word using the ICM, so you would click OK here. And then I'm gonna turn off bi-directional printing. I am gonna leave the mirror image box checked. So I'm gonna use all of those settings to print one print out of Word. And I do wanna show you something else here. There's a maintenance tab in this location. You can click this at any time. You can print a head nozzle check, which we did early in this video. You could do a head cleaning or a power cleaning directly from this menu if you needed to, if you were having printer issues. You could also click extended settings here. So the one thing I wanted to point out is this print density slider. If you feel like you don't have enough ink on your paper or too much, you can slide this up and down at this point and change how much ink goes on the paper. So it's kind of interesting and might be something you wanna play with if you're not happy with the printing or the colors. There are a few other settings here that you could need at one time. We're not gonna cover those in this video. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK. And here I'm going to go ahead and click OK just to save this. I do check this every single time when I'm printing regardless from the program that I'm printing from. So I will click OK. This is what I'm gonna print and I'm gonna print it out of Photoshop first and then I'm gonna head to like something like Word and print it. So first let's print from Photoshop and we'll click Print. So we wanna pick our printer up here and then we'll change it to landscape. We'll make sure this is sized correctly. And then we are going to do Photoshop manages colors. And when I installed this printer, it actually put two ICC profiles on my computer for me. I don't have to go out and find these anywhere else. Again, one is for rigid and one's for textile. So I'm gonna print for textile. For rendering intent, I'm also gonna click perceptual. So I'm gonna try that one. You can actually try any of these and see which one you're happy with. Then I'm gonna click print settings. And again, I would pick whatever type I'm using. So I'm gonna put this on a shirt textile. I want to do high quality. It's a landscape, eight and a half by 11. And then we'll click more options. We're gonna make sure bi-directional is off. I do wanna leave mirror on. And then I'm gonna click advanced for custom here. And I'm gonna say no color adjustment. 
Why? Because I just said I want Photoshop to manage my colors. I don't want the printer to manage the colors at all, so I'm going to leave this at no. So I'm going to pick no color adjustment and click OK. And now all of these settings look fine. Again, you could go into these extended settings if you wanted to adjust how much ink is laid down on your paper. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to click print. All right, so let's print the same exact design from Word. So I'm gonna click print, choose the printer, and then click printer properties. So I'm gonna pick printer properties, and we're gonna, again, run through this. So I'm gonna use textile, I'm gonna use high quality, I'm gonna go over here to more options, turn off bi-directional, do custom, advanced, and pick ICM profile. I could also run some other tests, right? So I could run it with automatic correction with no ICM. You could run all kinds of tests here to see which way you like the colors. I'm just gonna run a couple for now to see if I like the colors themselves. Now that I have all of the settings, I'm gonna click OK, and then I will click Print. I did wanna point out that the Epson sublimation paper has a bright white side and a matte white side. You do always want to print on the bright white side, so put the bright white side down in the printer tray, matte side up, that way it will print on the bright white side. This top one is the version printed from Photoshop. This bottom one is the version printed from Word. I can't tell a whole lot of difference with the print, but with sublimation, you need to press it in order to actually compare your colors, and I recommend pressing to 100% polyester. So we're gonna press both of these, and remember that the colors may appear more muted on the print, than they do once they're pressed. So let me press both of these and we'll come back and compare before I decide which way I'm gonna do the rest of my prints and then I'm gonna make some more projects. Here are my shirts after pressing. The top one is the one I printed from Photoshop. The bottom one is the one I printed from Word. And here are both of the papers after pressing so you can see how much ink was released. Now I would say they're both fairly equal. I might even like the Word version a little bit better. So what I like about this is that I don't have to worry about a program to print from with the F-170. I can print from any basic program that's on my computer, get these stunning results, because the ICC profiles are built into the printer driver. So I love that about the F-170. So now that I know that, I can print from any program on my computer get these results. So I really think the answer is yes. Right out of the box, I got the colors I wanted. I'm really excited that I can basically print out of any program within a couple minutes. Like it was a couple minutes set up and all of a sudden I'm printing out of any program I want. Really no experimentation required. So I experimented a little bit, but I really didn't need to. Everything looked really great out of any program I wanted to. So now I can just start printing some sublimation prints. So let's start printing. So now we have several prints out of the Epson F-170, a variety of things to put on mugs, tumblers, coasters, and so much more. So I'm going to prep some sublimation blanks. Remember, you do need sublimation blanks with a polyester coating to work with the SureColor F-170 sublimation printer. So let's make some projects. So after I printed several sublimation prints, I applied them to several different sublimation blanks. So the process to apply these to any sublimation blank is to be sure to clean your sublimation blank well, then apply your print with some heat tape to hold it into place to make sure that it's still. You do need heat resistant tape for this portion of the process. Then you wanna use protective paper on the top. You can use a sublimation protective paper or even butcher paper to protect the top surface. You just wanna do this to protect your heat press itself from any ink bleed. On things like shirts, you would also put a piece of protective paper on the inside of the shirt to protect something like the ink going through the front of the shirt and sublimating onto the back. Also on fabric blanks, you do want to pre-press those for 10 to 15 seconds just to remove any moisture. This really is only applicable to fabric blanks. Then you just need your heat source. You can use any heat press of your choice. In this video, I'm using a mug press, a standard heat press, as well as a tumbler press. Any heat press that you choose to use does need to go up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You find the time and temperature for each blank on the blank manufacturer's website as a general rule. 400 degrees at 60 seconds is a good starting point if you have no other reference. I pressed each of these blanks and then allowed them to cool before I removed the sublimation print. You can even remove the sublimation print when it's a little warm. Just be sure to use heat resistant gloves. Then once you press, you just remove your sublimation print 
you can wait until this cools in order to remove it, and you have something that is permanent. So as soon as you remove that sublimation print, the project is permanent. There is no other sealing or anything required. The sublimation ink itself has a chemical reaction with the coating and bonds permanently to the surface. This is a great way to get those professional looking results right in the comfort of your own home. Let's look up close at some of those results. So here is that gorgeous mug. I love the colors on this mug and it came out perfectly. I went ahead and ripped the edges on this just to give the edges a cool look. And then this sublimation blank has a black handle as well as a black rim. And I really think it adds to this design. And here's the coaster I made with a all over patterned print. And I did want to show you using this as an example of how much your colors change when you press them. So this came out of my printer. This is after I pressed it. And you can see that the colors really, really pop after you press them. So don't be scared if they look muted when they come out of your printer because they'll look amazing once you press it. This one's actually a bookend. So it's a metal blank, but it's foldable. And I actually sublimated on both sides. This is another example of how much the print pops after you press it. I love these foldable blanks because now I have a 3D bookend for any room in my home. And finally, I just had to do a tumbler. So this is a look at a full wrap tumbler with a floral design watercolor up top. I love the way this one turned out. Love this print and the colors really, really pop after I press them to my tumbler blank. And now I have all these gorgeous crafts to show off. So I made several different projects for you today so you could see just how well the F-170 works. Now let's talk about recommendations with the F-170. So I do recommend that you always put Epson ink back in it. So once you need to reorder ink, now the ink does last a really long time, but once you need to reorder, be sure you're getting Epson ink. And then I do recommend for best results that you use the Epson sublimation paper. It does come, I have an eight and a half by 11 and an eight and a half by 14, which is the max size for my F-170. If you do end up upgrading, going to like the larger model, they make paper for those as well. So I always recommend staying within the ecosystem for best results. So if you change paper, you may not get the same color results. So that's what I would be afraid of. And then you wouldn't be happy with the color coming out of your F-170, probably the paper, if you haven't used the genuine Epson paper. Now, if you put different ink inside the printer, they can't guarantee the warranty. So definitely keep refilling with that genuine Epson ink. Now let's talk maintenance. So you would wanna print with a sublimation printer fairly regularly. Um, I generally recommend like every week or two, just run a couple prints. The prints do last after you print them. So I have used a sublimation print after I printed it months and months later. So as long as you keep them out of the sun, out of the humidity, away from dust, they are going to be fine for a while. So every one to two weeks, be sure you use your sublimation printer. Now this F-170 is a great printer for a small business. So perhaps you don't even have to worry about that. Hopefully your orders are coming and flowing through. So you will be using the printer regularly anyway. But if you find yourself in a small business slump or you purchase the F-170 just as a craft printer, be sure you're using it regularly for optimal performance. Now, bonus, the guide that came with this printer has tons of troubleshooting steps. So if you ever have a problem with your printer, keep that guide and you can walk through those troubleshooting steps right in the guide. Also, you have full Epson support. So if you have trouble during the setup process or afterwards, be sure to contact Epson for help and support with your printer, with your colors, whatever you need, they'll be happy to help. So what did I think of the Epson F-170? So I found it super easy to set up. I was thrilled that I had two different color profiles for rigid and textile so that I could make sure my projects really pop right off the printer no matter which project I was making. I was also over the moon and static that I could print from any program and get the stunning results. So I don't have to worry about always using Photoshop. I can use basically any program on my computer, pick that color correction and fixes the color for me and looks amazing right out of the printer. No adjustment needed, no experimentation, no anything. So that also really thrilled me. So easy setup, great color, overall a really great printer. So I hope you enjoyed my review of the Epson SureColor F170. So now if you have any questions about the F170, any of the projects I made, please ask those in the comment section below. If you liked this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week.
Bye-bye.